Welcome to the NGIT website and math podcast. My name is Vanessa and today I'll be covering inequalities and their properties. So we've come to understand our equalities which deal with the equal sign. So we can make you know a statement saying that B is equal to A plus C which basically interprets as that whatever, th whatever the number whatever number symbolized by B um, is equal to the summation of A plus C. But what if um, these expressions aren't exactly equal, but we can compare them by saying that one is smaller than the other or one is greater than the other? That's what we call an inequality. And there's several ways of expressing inequalities. We've got the less than we have the greater than and then we can also simultaneously say get, or provide options of inequality with, with the same sign by saying less than or equal to and greater than or equal to so these are the four possible symbols we can use and they're pretty much just the same except that you, you what you're saying for the first one is that some number is smaller than another number because you always want to read inequalities from left to right so and the good um, rule of thumb is is the, the point of the inequality sign always points to the smaller number so if we, if we, have, if we use the first one that means that some number is smaller than another number here, the, in the, it's pointing to the right, so that means that the number on the left is greater than the number on the right. And these are the same concept, with the exception that we, we include two possibilities for the expression. The, so for the, for the third one here, the number on the left can be either smaller or equal to than the number on the right. And then it's, it's the opposite for the, for the last symbol the number on the left can be greater than or equal to the number on the right. So, and with the, uh, with the third and fourth symbol, it's always or, it's not and. The condition is that you have either option, and if either option is met by the, by the statement, then the, then the inequality can be considered true. So if we just do a couple of examples, just uh, showing inequalities with real numbers. Uh, so let's look at this option. Say if we had the statement five. Okay, here what we're saying is five is greater than zero, because the it's pointing the the uh, symbol is pointing to the right, so that means that the whatever number's on the left has to be greater than the number that's on the right. So if we're saying five is greater than zero, which is a true statement. Um, what if we had something else like this? Okay, here we have the symbol pointing to the left, which means the number on the left has to be smaller than the number on the right. So, it's what we're saying here is that negative two is smaller than negative three, which which is false because if we look on the number line. negative numbers go in the opposite direction. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. Negative 2 is to the right of negative 3, which means that negative 2 should be larger than negative 3. So this inequality statement is considered to be false. However, if we had 2 and 3 instead, now here we have the OR condition and because it's pointing to the left, we're saying that the number on the left is should be small, uh, less than or equal to the number on the right. So 2 is less than or equal to 3, which is true because 2 is less than 3. Remember, if either condition is met, then the statement is considered true. So in this case, our statement is true. And then one more. What if we had 4... 
Okay. Here in this statement we're saying 4 is less than or equal to 4. Now we know 4 is a it's the same number on, the, on both sides, So, but we have the second condition which is basically saying 4 is equal to 4, which is a true statement. Now because one of the statements is true, that means we have to consider the whole inequality to be true. And then along with inequalities, there's a couple of um, properties we need to keep in mind. Which I'm going to go over using um, letters. Um, the first property is called what's called the uh, trichomedy property, which means that when you don't have the, the, the both conditions, the less than or equal to and the greater than or equal to, you have one of three options when it comes to comparing expressions or numbers. Either A is less than B, A can be equal to B, and A can be greater than B. So realistically speaking, if you have two numbers or two expressions, they can either be equal to, they can be less than, or they can be greater than, but only one of these statements can be true at, in, 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 a, in an example. And then the other property that goes along with inequalities is the transitive property, where if you have, uh, so in this case, you would have three numbers. Say if you had these numbers A, B, and C. Okay, If you make the statement, if you make two statements, first you say that A is less than B. Okay, that means that A is going to be on the to the left on the number line than B. But then you also say that B is less than C, which means B is also to the left of C. So what we're saying here is A come if we're going from if we're reading from left to right, A is going to be before B to the left of B and B is going to be to the left of C. So if we write that on a number line like, like so, it means A is here, B is here, that's what the first statement says, and then B is less than C, which means B is to the left of C, which means C goes here. So if that's, if that's what our number line looks like, then we can pretty much say that also that A is less than C, which, looking at our number line, is true. So that's what the transitive property says. Now from, two from these two statements, we can get the, th the third statement. So thank you for visiting the NGIT website. If you, have, if you need any further assistance, please feel free to stop by the CAPE or the Center for Academic and Professional Enrichment located in Kupferin Hall, room 200. Good luck with your studies.